This is the video review of Transformers Masterpiece Ultra Magnus. Um, before I really begin, I do want to say I'm sorry it took me so long to get out to doing this. Um, after I did the Leader Class Ultra Magnus review, um, I got really sick. Like, my allergies started acting up really bad. I got nasal infection. I lost my voice. And um, I I'm better now. I, I ended up going to the allergist and... It turns out I'm allergic to just about everything, so I'm on a, a several antihistamines, nasonex, stuff like that, and I'm due to start, um, uh, I, I don't quite know what to call it, but uh, where, where they shoot you with what you're allergic with to make you no longer allergic. I'm starting that soon, and so hopefully that will never be a problem again, but that's what's been happening with me and why it's taking me so long to get around to doing this guy. Okay, so to start off with, um, Ultra Magnus comes with a lot of little itty bitty details, so I'm going to go everything as fast as I can, because I don't want this going too long, but I start with, he comes with two of these little miniature human guys, they look just about the same, um, with just a very small change to the, uh, to the uniform they're wearing. You can see the other one in there and how he doesn't, uh, maybe you can see it, but he doesn't have the same, uh, wings on his shoulders there. Um, and both of these guys can ride in Ultra Magnus, and they uh, don't have to come out for the transformation. So generally, I just leave them in the um, in the cab here. And so you pull this out like that. And the only reason you don't have to pull this out, um, uh, this section here, but I do it so I can get my fingers in. And then what you do with this guy is you put his uh, put him into a sitting position. And then there's a little red tab right there that will go right between his thighs. So it's kind of hard to do, and you have to be lucky. Like, I've tried to do this on camera like five times, and only once I got it to really work the first time I tried it. Uh, there, I got it. And so they just sit in there like that. And I'll close this up, and this is the uh, next detail that I really like about Ultra Magnus here, is that the cab can come separate. Now, he can't turn into a White Optimus Prime, but uh, he, he can just separate like that, and I think that's really cool that um, even though that this is like necessary to combine with the uh, trailer armor here, it, it can come off like that, and I think that's just really nifty. Um, he, he comes with an extra pair of hands here that I'm not really going to do anything with because I can't. Um, they just uh, uh, come on and off with ball joints, and uh, they're supposed to be able to hold the um, uh, matrix of leadership that comes with uh, MP10, but I don't have MP10 anymore, nor do I have that matrix, so I can't really show anything, and they're otherwise worthless. So I'll put those off to the side and never to be seen again. Uh, next we'll come in, and uh, there's a little mushroom peg right here that goes into here. You will just push that on, and it will connect. If you want to remove it, there's a little lever that you uh, push in here, and that uh, releases the catch if you want to uh, remove it. And here's Ultra Magnus in his car carrier mode altogether. Uh, now, no, it's kind of a bad car carrier mode, not that there's anything that Takara could have done about it, because, like, um, it's supposed to look like the uh, G1 self, but, uh, like, no car can comfortably sit up here or down here. You can put a car there, but it looks kind of silly. So, um, use your imagination is all you can do with it. Um, now, for features in this mode, uh, the... Uh, 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 tractor can turn, but the wheel down here gets blocked by this little bit right here. So you have to push the wheel past, and then you get a pretty decent range. And it can turn if you do that. It's, it's very neat when it works, but it doesn't work as well as it should. And uh, that's about it for this mode. Um, it, it's very uh, nifty, very nice. Uh, it's got tons of little surface details. Like, this is basically a copy of the uh, MP10 cab. Um, but it's just, it's a very well done, except that it doesn't look like a car carrier. It has lots of nice little details on it. And anyway, there it is. Now, start the transformation. The first thing you want to do is take the wheels here. There are little tabs here and here that will go through the, um, the uh, back of the cab here into the trailer. And those will keep this all uh, solidified together so that it won't wiggle and wobble as much. And that is very necessary for the transformation, just for sanity's sake. Um, next, you'll take these and you rotate them down. Now, I usually end up forgetting the, to, uh, fold, uh, to fold the smoke sacks back up when I go to um, uh, truck mode. But um, anyway, then you'll do uh, fold back the um, rear view mirrors here. And then we're going to start on the arms. You have to do the arms first or else it's just an 
unmanageable mess uh, handling them because uh, as you will notice when I unpeg them from the uh, back of the truck, uh, the uh, arm hinges up here, they are not strong enough to hold the arms and they're in their full extended mode. So we're, we have to do this now. So to start off, we'll split the arms here. We'll pull the gun out from between them. And it's a very nice little gun here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the arms and we're going to uh, telescope sandwich these back like this to reveal the hands. And then we'll come to the side. And there's this little panel that you have to fold in here and a little tab will come out the top here. And the reason why you do this is because when you fold this around, you pop this up, there's a little cavity right in here, and this box needs to go over that little box in there. That little box in there is the uh, shoulder joint. So then you'll rotate this back like that, and it will tab into place. Then you'll rotate this around like this, and then you'll just pop that out and turn it down because that will be the front of the arm. Then you'll pop this out and then you'll put it over to the side like that, rotate the arm around, and there's an arm done. And I'll do the same thing to the other side real quick. And it's a very interesting transformation, but I'm not sure it's better than what the Leader Class uh, Combiner Wars um, Ultra Magnus figure did, which was just a telescoping joint. Like, I think that was probably the better way to go, just because it's it doesn't take as much effort to do, and uh, the amount of effort that it takes to do this part, um, it, it's not so much effort, it's just that it's it gets very cumbersome to hold everything all together while you're messing with the arms and then transforming everything else. And so just having a simple transformation of the arms would have been really nice, even though this is fun to do it the first couple of times you do it, it just gets old after a while. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab this, you're going to pull it back, and then there's a little lip in there, and you want to pull this over the lip like that, and then fold that up and just leave that to the back. You'll do the same thing on this side. Yeah, see what I mean about just everything being cumbersome? Uh, now, now, in this case, we're past the arm transformation, so it's not that big of a deal, but just like a lot of this would have been so much easier if they had gone for something a little bit simpler. Um, now, anyway, uh, we're going to move on. We're going to pop these out. Rotate them around, and uh, do keep in mind that because I'm doing this on camera, I'm not able to support it quite as well because like, I have to keep my hands out of the way of the camera, so that's another reason why this is getting uh, cumbersome. Anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and rotate these up, fold these up. And uh, do be very careful to um, never hold the figure by this part because it's held by a very thin line of plastic. Like, I have seen pictures of this part snapped off, just this side right here. It's not an issue in the truck mode because, like, this supports it from the bottom. But in robot mode, when this can swing out for, a, uh, for an ankle tilt, this part is very fragile, so never hold them by the leg. Um, like, this is supposed to, like, a, this will come down, and then there's a little tab right here that this pegs onto. This is supposed to support it, but it's a little itty-bitty tab. It's not going to be, it's not enough. Um, so, like, as long as it's held, it's fine, but if it comes undone and you grab it, then there's a very good chance it'll break. So just be very careful of the legs there. And now we can get them kind of standing up. And um, we'll move this down, like this, tab it into place, and then we're going to start working on the cab up here. And the cab is probably my favorite part of it, just because everything about it is very interesting without being, like once you get uh, these uh, wheels uh, pegged in down here, it all works very well without being cumbersome. Uh, it, part, part of it's just because you'll have everything else done by the time you start working on the cab. So anyway, there's a little uh, lip under here. You get your fingernail under it, pull it up, and then you can pull this down like that. And then this is on a weird double hinge. Let me get my light in here a bit better. This is on a bit of a weird double hinge here, um, and you need to uh, push it back and then down. And then there's a little clip right here that goes into there. So it will go in like that. You'll rotate the head around, and then there's a white slider in there that will go forward, and then that will just keep that in there super duper solid. Uh, keep these out of the way. We'll rotate to the back, 
to the cab and as you can see the guys are still in there you're going to pull this back and then you're going to fold it under like this on a double hinge in there oops um a part fell off it's a different faceplate i'll show you about that in a, in a little bit and then there's a little uh slot here that'll go on to a little tab right there if you can't see it because of the uh light i apologize um it's just like that this guy is um he's there's just so much going on with this guy that's hard to handle him sometimes the uh, place where this thing went was right here you fold this up like that and then you will pull these out to the side there's a little tab right here that will go into the hubcap of the wheels rotate them over then push them in like that and these are um, like solid plastic but very thin so do be careful not to snap them you'll push them in and then here we have the uh, cab all situated and then what we're going to do is we're going to fold these back so there are there are clips right here that will go here a tab right here they'll go into a saw right here and a saw right here that goes onto a tab right there so i'll bring this around tab it into place and do the same thing to the other side it'll clip together and this is Ultra Magnus all together in his pretty snazzy looking robot mode. Like, this looks like it just walked out of the cartoon. It is really cool looking. And like that transformation, as much as I complained about it, it really is kind of a beautiful transformation because it just handled everything. Like how the smoke sacks folded down. I loved that bit. <coughs> Excuse me, I am still working through my, um, through my allergies a little bit. Um, but yeah, he is just a very beautiful uh, trans transformer. Um, his little butt flap down here, I don't know if this is show accurate, I assume it's not. <coughs> but it's not as obnoxious as I thought it would be. Um, what I have more of a problem with are these little edges down here that just hang there, that do kinda nothing, and are... Like his back, I wish looked a little bit cleaner, even though it still does look very nice and clean. And uh, you can see that the little human guys, they're not really hidden uh, too well, but they're out of the way and you can keep them in him when he's transformed. And I, I do really like that. Now let's see, one problem I have with this guy, I'm going to have to make sure these all straight for me to uh, check this. Okay, so if you have him all... Well, no, he's not doing it now. I, because of how much the uh, hip ratchets moved when I was uh, messing with him and the knee ratchets when I was transforming him, I can't tell quite what's going on with him now. But um, actually, I'm pretty sure this is it. If you have his legs perfectly straight, the, uh, the way the uh, tolerances and the ratchets work make him lean forward a lot. And I don't like that. If you move them both back at the uh, thigh, um, he stands a bit straighter, but he... You can make him stand straight, but then he leans back just because of the um, the tolerances in the ratchet again. And so the only way to make him stand just perfectly straight is to have one leg offset from the other. So say one leg is going backwards to click on the uh, on the um, hip ratchet, one's going forward, or you could do it at the knee so that um, one knee is backward and one knee is forward, and then he'll stand up straight without knee without much wobble. And so. That's a minor issue I have with him, but it's an issue I encounter every time I transform him, and it gets kind of old after a while dealing with it. Another issue that he has is that um, his shoulders only go out one click, and it just doesn't do much. The only way to get any expression out of his shoulders is to bring him out on this hinge right here, but this hinge is just very, very loose. I've tried to tighten it before with a uh, with super glue even, because I knew that future floors wouldn't be quite enough, and it didn't work. Like, I figured they can get brick because of super glue but it did get um it, it just didn't work so these are very loose and uh if you don't have them pegged in all the way up here they'll just flop a lot now you can't just peg them in like that and then he'll just be solid but the problem you have then is that his arms uh just are super duper close to his sides and he looks very very stiff and he can't really do anything with them so his arms are a very big disappointment for me i wish they were a little bit better and i do know there is an upgrade kit you can get that can uh, make his arms go out just a little bit more and that's nice but you still have to have his arms uh pulled away from the body like that to um 
to, to do it. So even, so you still get this uh, loose bit right here. Now, when he's just standing, it's not that big of an issue, but it does impact um, playing with him, like with your hands and stuff. That gets kind of annoying. And so for first articulation, his arms will rotate around, uh, his head will rotate around 360 degrees and look up and down. It's a very nice head. You can even uh, move it back and forward on that slider I showed you, even though for transformation, it's supposed to be forward. His arms go rotate around 360. They can go in and out three clicks where one of them is very in like that if you want to do it. You do have this right here to like simulate pectoral articulation, which is nice. That's there. I just wish it were a bit stiffer. He has a uh, bicep swivel, 90 degrees, a little bit under 90 degrees at the elbow, uh, just because of how big his forearms are. And then his uh, hands are on ball joints, so you can uh, waggle them around a little bit. And then his index finger is independent and his other fingers can open. And this can let you put in his gun like this. There, there's a little tab right here that goes into a slot in his arm, in his hand, uh, right there. And it holds, its, it holds it pretty well. You know, they basically figured out how to make Masterpiece hands old stuff. Um, and it's a pretty decent looking gun. Maybe a little bit short to be like quite a rifle because it's more like a big pistol. Um, the one thing that bugs me about the gun is that there's no real place to put it when you don't want him holding it. Uh, the best I've come up with is just to hook this uh, on his back like that. And that works uh, well enough. Then uh, his legs can um, move forward back, in and out, bend at the knee, rotate above the knee. Basically, every, everything you would expect, just a little bit limited by the bulk of his uh, legs, and then an um, uh, angle tilt there. And so you can get him into some kind of decent poses, but nothing quite as nice as I would like. Um, I wanted him to be a bit more dynamic, and he's more statuesque. Like the um, pose I had him in in the... Um, uh, the uh, Ultra Magnus Runs for Mayor video that I'm pretty sure a lot of you have seen. That's like the best pose I ever had him in because like this is just standing with his legs apart a little bit. There's nothing too interesting about it. Now for gimmicks, um, I did show you that he has an alternate face, but you pull it. Oops, uh, you uh, pull uh, this down from here. You pull this out and here's his alternate face plate. You pop that out and then you pop the front of the head off like this, and here you can see what looks like a white Optimus Prime head. And then you pop the old faceplate out, you pop the new one in like that, and then you pop it on like that, and there you have a screaming face. And I do like that you can do that, and that the uh, extra face stores on him. I like that everything can store on him. Um, except his gun, but you can still kind of put his gun on him. And then the last uh, really interesting thing about this guy is that he does have a matrix of leadership chamber. What you do is you pop this up, and then uh, you open up the doors here. And the matrix, and the matrix I have inside right there is the uh, matrix that comes with the uh, Masterpiece uh, Hot Rod. And specifically the US version. I don't know if the Japanese one was any different. But the thing is, I can't get it out now. Like, I've tried to use a, um, a jeweler screwdriver to get it out, and I thought I was going to um, bruise the plastic up here instead, so it's, it's just kind of stuck in there now, which is fine by me, but um, do beware, uh, only put in the uh, MP10 Matrix of Leadership if you want to get it back. And then that closes, and that closes, and... That's about it for my video review of the Masterpiece Ultra Magnus figure. It has a lot of flaws, like with the arms especially. Um, if nothing else, because of how annoying they are in the transformation. Um, because like, if you don't transform the arms first and you do um, everything else instead, they're just going to be flopping around and stuff and they are... They take a bit of getting used to and they're not... They don't do as much as they should. But um... I, I like this guy. He's more like a work of art than a uh, Transformers I normally know them. Um, so it comes to more, uh, do you want a really awesome statue or do you want a fun toy? Um, so if you want a fun toy, I would go for the Lear Class Ultra Magnus figure because it has uh, some comparable gimmicks like the um, the Minimus Ambus uh, chest um, riding thing. Um, that like compares to some of the stuff that this guy does um, and, and it's overall just a fun toy whereas this is more like This one has majesty and so that that should be your deciding factor uh, 
your budget, how much you're willing to spend. Uh, this is about $200 worth of leader class figures, about $50. And then um, if you want something that is ma majestic versus fun. So those are your two deciding factors because it's not bad, it's just not perfect. So uh, anyway, this has been a video review of Masterpiece Ultra Magnus. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I reviewed Transformers, Power Rangers, Digimon, lots of stuff like that. If any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe and thank you for watching.